What's up, Capoeira Nation? Welcome back to the Capoeira Experience Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. And thank you so much for coming back to the podcast. And so, like I mentioned before, this interview with Mestre Feja Dura, all the way from uh, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, it was a very, very nice and interesting interview. We talk about so many stuff, so many stuff, especially about community, about being together, about how important it is be connected to people so because it was a very nice uh, interview and I was very very happy to have him on the podcast I extended this for two episodes so I'll try to split it in half uh, I'll try to find a way how to split it in half so that way you can get the max information per episode and it's no way way too long on that single episode so stay tuned for the second part. So in this first first part, uh, we're going to, to be talking about how capoeira can impact people, how this can transform people's life. Uh, we also talk about how multicultural capoeira is. People from all over the world. And by multicultural, I mean because he, it is very nice a scenario for to attract people and talking about attracting we also talk about how capoeira acts as a magnet to bring people together to bring people from any any corner of the world because we all you me everybody everybody can feel accepted in the capoeira community so this uh, is a people's community is us is a martial arts form cultural anything however you want to call it but it's about people and and again it's kind of interesting that i as i talk to him as i develop the conversation with him we also agreed on the entire podcast that this this art this community is about people i'm pretty sure you heard me before saying this but this uh, connection is about people this connection is this art form is to connect us not to to break us apart so be be uh tuned and be connected to this conversation because it's very very interesting it's very very important for us to see how how other people especially masters talk about community and be united doesn't matter how you look like how where you're from uh your group your capoeira style it's about us it's about you it's about me it's about them it's about everybody okay so i got super excited so this episode is super super cool is super nice information there from Mestre Fejadura. Mestre Fejadura all the way from Brazil. So I'm super, super happy to have him on this episode. Please stay tuned. Pay a lot of attention and stay tuned for next episode for next week because it's going to be the second part and the second... Um, yes, the second part. <laughs> so stay tuned there, okay? Remember, stay united. Keep... Keep supporting your school and keep loving people. This podcast is for everybody. This podcast is for you. If you are listening to this, I very, very appreciate you. I very, very, uh, I'm very humble for you to be listening to this, to be listening to my beautiful voice. <laughs> so to be listening to the experience of any Caporista that come to the, to the podcast. If you are listening, don't be afraid to reach out because I want to listen to your experience, okay? I want to learn from your experience, and I think the community can learn from your experience too, okay? I don't care your day one or 100 years doing capoeira. Let's connect because we're people. We're one. You and I are one people, okay? Or one person. If it's two people fusioning into one is a plural or is it singular <laughs> I'll leave it up to you enjoy
Peace. Peace. What's up, Capoeira Nation? Welcome back to the Capoeira Experience Podcast. This is your host, Instructor Kashishi. And today, I'm very, very happy and very honored to, to have this amazing guest. Uh, he's a pedagogue, a president of the Brazilian Institute of Capoeira Education, and also director of the project Brincadeira de Angola. Uh, this, he has amazing, amazing projects, I think, uh, helping so many, so many, so many life uh, in Brazil, making a, a very amazing impact in, in people's life through Capoeira, which I think all of us can probably relate a little bit of, with, with this. And uh, one of ma many of his projects, uh, or a few of his projects are uh, Capoeira Jihua, uh, which provides Capoeira, uh, to, Capoeira classes to homeless people. We also have Santa Clara Project, which uh, serves hundreds of children uh, from economically disadvantaged. We have the uh, Benjamin Const Constant Project, uh, a federal school that specializes with visual, visually impaired children. And we also have the Capoeira Namare Project that helps uh, neighborhood with some, uh, with, I think it's probably, uh, I'm pretty sure by now, it's probably uh, over 100,000 in a heaven uh, in the north zone of Rio de Janeiro. And we also have Capoeira in Occupation, which receives dozens of children in social uh, social vulnerability in, uh, in downtown Rio de Janeiro. And let me introduce you with a big, big honor. And please uh, uh, pay a lot of attention to, to his words because it's going to be a lot of, a lot of wisdom sharing here. Uh, Mestre Fejadura, how are you doing, Mestre? I'm really good, I'm really good, Kashi. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you, Kapura community, for being here. It's a big pleasure. It's a huge honor. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. The, the honor is mine to, to have you here, to, to share some of your projects. Uh, I think uh, using your energy and your knowledge to, to help people, I think that's, that's a huge, huge example for us. And I think uh, I love sharing those kind of stories because it's, it's a huge, huge example that we can all in the Capoeira community, doesn't matter the country, I think we can use that as an example. Yes, definitely, definitely. We, we, with Capoeira, I feel that we have a history, we have a background of uh, socially involved people since its roots. Yes. Uh, because in a way, Capoeira starts with people in, in a very vulnerable situation in facing the state violence. And if we think about the situation, the environment, the background in which Capoeira was developed over the centuries, we also see that these people are always involved in um, teaching or interacting with socially disadvantaged people. Uh, and nowadays, not any different. We, we still have projects going on all around Brazil, even though Capoeira became more of a sport or more of a physical activity, more of a mainstream um, phenomena in, in a way. But it, it still has its roots in the favelas and the slums, in the, in the um, disadvantaged areas. And uh, you still see that some of the best players, some of the best teachers, some of the best masters are people who came from these communities, many of them who were part of social projects themselves, either by, by being instructors, learning with, with the masters inside the social projects or simply by being uh, in the streets and interacting with other Capoeira people. It's, uh, it's, it's recurrent throughout Brazil, the like, stories of people who made their lives better or, or even made their lives possible 100%. through being in, in a Capoeira environment. Yes. Yes, and I think I think, uh, like you said, a lot of 
great Caporizas came out of this situation and and I think it's awesome for us to 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 see because sometimes you know sometimes we get caught up on on life and and we forget to see how Capoeira is impacting our people's life and and through these projects and that that's one of the reasons I wanted to to bring you to the podcast is to see to to bring to non Portuguese uh, speakers or people outside of Brazil to see what happens or how Capoeira is helping these people and how Capoeira and how can we take as a as an example for us to provide the same tools because it's Capoeira and Capoeira is everywhere right now and we can use how we can use that as an example to for us to do in our communities and and help people around the world you know and, and Capoeira is a beautiful tool to help many many people many life and and he he helped me he still helps helps me until today's days and deeper i get into capoeira i can see how much he can help me even more it's very it's very multicultural nowadays yeah capoeira has has widespread in such a way that you get people like let's see your own case you're, you're from venezuelan origins right yes and did you learn Capoeira in Venezuela or, or in the United States? In Venezuela. Uh, I moved to the U.S. when I was already tw uh, 26 years old. Okay, so you see, you were into a Brazilian culture in Venezuela, which is not a very open country. Yes. And where Capoeira is not a mainstream activity. Right. Uh, when you get to the U.S., there is uh, an environment, a popular environment there, which welcomes you. Yes. And, and you can fit in because you're part of a Brazilian culture. Yeah. Prior to, to being uh, uh, accepted in, in the United States by, by the American culture, you, you get accepted or incorporated by the, the Capoeira culture, which is not made of Brazilians. Like yeah. uh, uh, Capoeira people in, in the United States are not Brazilian in general. Yeah. They're, they're, they're mostly either uh, American or, or uh, foreigners from all around. Capoeira has, has this uh, ability to attract like a magnet. It attracts people from different backgrounds all over the world. It, 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 you don't see a Capoeira school all around the world without a foreigner. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a very, um, it's a, it's a very um, fundamental aspect of Capoeira to embrace people from different backgrounds, from, okay. from different origins, and maybe people feel accepted in that environment. And that's why they, they look to be there yeah, they look to be with, with people who think differently. In, in general, Capoeira, it's, it's never a mainstream culture. So yes. you, you get people who don't really fit in in the, in the um, um, mainstream society anyway. So yeah. people who are not so much into consumerism, people who are not so much into mainstream activities end up looking for Capoeira and there is a sort of a, a tribal, a tribal uh, community yes. all around the world. It's like it's widespread all around the world, but it, it, it holds the same uh, principles and concepts. A hundred percent. Yeah. And I, I love to, every time uh, I talk to, to everybody and I, I focus so much that here in, on the podcast that, you know, Capoeira is about people. It's about human being, the human being. And from, from what I learned all these years is Capoeira was made from people to bring people together to, to find that human connection. And, and I think it's beautiful. And I think that that's never going to be changing because we, we need people. You know, we, we, we need people to bring that energy to the heart that we need people to, to train with. We need people to, to help, to help. And it's, it's just Capoeira is such a, a rich environment for many aspects. Absolutely. 
Yes. It has it has this um, stereotypical aspects. It has the, the the stereotypes that we need. You know, there is the the stereotype of uh, this strong warrior culture. Yes. Right? That people need to feel united, like we have a, a something to fight together. Yes. Uh, just by the, the, the stances and, and the kicks and the dodges and, and the, the martial aspects of capoeira, you already have this uh, archetype of the warrior. Uh, at the same time, you, you have the, the other archetypes of um, people like the, the, the wisdom. There's always this wisdom, this underlying wisdom. It's not just about kicking each other in the face. Yeah, yeah. There is something more to it. And there is a, 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 so many other archetypical aspects that belong to all cultures. Like, like, it, it, like cross-culturally around the world, you, you see people making music, people uh, doing rituals in circles, people fighting and, and playing and, and having fun together. In, a, in a small communities uh, and in, in Western developed countries, these kind of cultures have uh, died, they have died off. It, it, like, let's say if there were Druid cults or, or Celtic cults that embraced the same principles of people being together in a circle, chanting and, and, and People like sort of getting um, in a in a in a state of altered consciousness. Yes. By using or not using uh, drugs or any kind of psychedelics to to induce this state, uh, that that was very common in in in, uh, in um, old times all around the world. But nowadays, you won't get to say it. It's it's um it's something that it's just non-existent in in Western cultures, and capoeira brings that back in a way because it's, it's it's a need. It's still a need. People still need to to celebrate together, to be yes. together. So uh, maybe these are archetypical, archetypical aspects of uh, of capoeira is what allows it to be all around the world uniting people with a, a similar uh, mentality 100 percent, yeah yeah i agree with that and now uh i start touching a little bit into into your work uh what are you what what is a little bit of your background like uh your studies and what got you into into studying deeper into capoeira? Well, I started capoeira very early. I was 15 years old. And um, during my, my first uh, weeks of capoeira, I dropped out of school because I was so, um, so hooked to capoeira and, and I couldn't really see a point in being in school. The school became pointless uh, at this time. Uh, and then I, it wasn't much of a choice. I just had to do it. It was more like a path. I just had this, this vision that Capoeira would be my, my future and my life. And that was in the very beginning. Uh, I, I can say it was in the very first day I saw a hoda. And then from then on, it just happened as, as I knew I had the, the, the vision, I knew what I wanted to do. Uh, it was um, it was just building the way to walk in that path. The path was there. I just needed to, to build the right tools. And that's like the physical tools, the mental tools. And as I, uh, I also decided to study more about capoeira uh, for me to know what was talking about for me to yeah. know what was doing i got into this realm of multiple disciplines that needed to be studied 
it's it's not it, it's not like something that you can be specialized in where is not something that you can be specialized like yeah. you, you need to be a generalist yeah yeah to be a capoeirista yeah it's, um so many but, uh, it covers so much yeah we, we're like ducks yeah we, we're not like eagles you know like eagles are specialized birds and fly very high haunt very specifically and and ducks are more like they dive they swim they fly they walk yeah uh, but they're not very good at anything right yeah. <laughs> so, so that's the same as us <laughs> we, we, very generic yeah we fight we, we do acrobatics we play music but we're not very good at anything really <laughs> we're not yeah specialized yeah and so uh having this understanding that there was so much to learn including history sociology politics anthropology and so on uh, apart from the obvious skills that every capoeira should master of the physical skills the musical skills uh, and uh, the tactics the strategic aspects of the game itself yeah and also the the, the being in the environment, being in the environment, it's something that takes a lot of time. Yeah, you, you go to hodas, you meet people, you play around, that takes time as well. It's, it's sort of a of study. So uh, in time, when I started working with, um, with uh, children, I, I was 18 when I started working with children. Uh, I, was, I was not much, uh, any different than them yeah it was uh, just sort of an older child yeah and i just realized that people around me were starting to have huge respect for my work and then i'm talking about the pedagogues the doctors the director of the schools the, the parents awesome. people who were way older than me had a huge respect for the work that I was doing. And I wasn't, I wasn't um, ready. I wasn't, I wasn't ripe. Okay. For, for, for all the acknowledgement. Because, From the specialist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was, uh, I just realized that there was something very good going on, but nice. I didn't really know what it was. So I needed to study more specifically about education. Nice. And that's when I began my studies, uh, self-educating basically in okay. education. That's a time before the internet. For like for many years, for eight years, uh, I was studying by myself. And then uh, I decided to go to university. So uh, I took exams nice. and was accepted into um, pedagogics. So, and then I took a, a BA in, in education. That was um, 20 years ago, yeah. Oh, cool, okay. Ago. That's awesome. So the, but, but, but the, that was the time when I started Capoeira. <laughs> That's awesome. Wow, yeah, it yeah. could have been one of my kids. <laughs> yeah. Who yeah. did you start with? It's, say what? Who did you start with? Uh, I started in, back in Venezuela with a group called Haices do Brasil. Okay. And yeah. in, uh, in which town? Uh, in Caracas. The Caracas. 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 The yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and a big, big, big university. Uh, one of the biggest universities in Caracas. It's, uh, it's called um, University City. Okay. Did you yeah. meet uh, Emerson? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Times. yeah. He, he was one of the pioneers the, uh, of Capoeira in Venezuela. Yeah, I met his guys, uh, like many of his students and himself a few times. Yeah, yeah. I, I together. Seen, yeah, I've seen videos of you guys uh, playing the Hada. Is that this famous uh, video of, of uh, Mr. Emerson playing the Hada? You were there. Uh, some of the people, uh, uh, Mr. Emerson's people were in the Hada, where they usually put like slow motion, because it's a lot of like really, really yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. The Movimento Novo video of uh, Emerson and Itapuã. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's, it's really, really, really cool. Harder. And, and you can see the energy, everybody like 
Yeah. Very, very engaged in the in the games. It was super, super cool to see this. And when I the first time I saw a video, I was like, wait, this Mr. Emerson is right there. He's he, he's awesome. He's awesome. He's a really cool guy. Yeah, what what what, what happened in, in Venezuela that everybody seems to to not be there? It seems like every everyone left. Yeah, yeah. All well, those guys, all those guys that were in the video, it seems like they left to, to Europe or, or even to Brazil, a few of them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What uh, happened to? I mean, I know about the political situation, but we'll, yes. What happened to the Capoeira situation? That's my question. What happened to the Capoeira situation in Venezuela? Yeah. Uh, I have a couple of friends who are still there. There's like Osvaldo. I don't know if you know him. Osvaldo Flores. Okay. Yeah. He's yeah. there, and and uh, India is also India, there. Yeah. yeah. Fabiola. But yeah. All the others left. Yeah. So how yeah. is the Capoeira situation? Do you know how, how it's going right now? Yeah, Professor Patino is there too. Uh, he he's one of the one holding Capoeira there. Uh, there's many other guys, but I, on my knowledge, he's uh, uh, they are the only Capoeira there for now. I haven't really uh, been engaged too much with the with the uh, Capoeira community there because uh, uh, here where I live and and I'm trying to build the community here. So I'm trying to to develop all this information for me to to grow Capoeira here, and okay. it's a it's a very small diversity here. So I'm trying to bring that diversity to to this state. Where do you live? Uh, I live in Indiana, a state called Indiana, and the city called Indianapolis. Okay. Yeah, it's very close to Chicago. Uh, it's like three hours away from Chicago. Uh, I have some Capoeira community around me, on the states around me. Uh, but here in Indiana, I'm pretty much the only one teaching Capoeira here, uh, which is it's, it's a good thing. It's a, it's a really good thing because I can build Capoeira from ground zero here. But it's a disadvantage because I don't have nobody to train with, <laughs> with just my students. So it's, it's, it's pretty cool to see, to see Capoeira developing here from pretty much from scratch. Used to be some Capoeiristas here before, but they, they left. Yeah, now we've got the internet, so things got easier. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, now yes. we zoom and and we can get connected with many capoeiristas. Of course, yeah, sometime easy. before we, maybe you'd have someone teaching capoeira like a couple of hours away from you, and you you wouldn't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and before you know you you just by connection before all the internet came around. And, and social media and all that stuff came around. You just used to connect just with, with, with people by, by voice, you know, like, oh yeah, I know this guy, let's go there and, and travel and visit them. And-, and yeah, it'll be good when it grows there, like at some point, maybe you, you can expel some of your students. A hundred percent, oh yes. So they can build another group and then you can have competition and then the groups can fight against each other. <laughs> <laughs> and then it to strengthen the, 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 the group identity. <laughs> and then they say the right time. dive. Yeah, then they open more groups. <laughs> yes. Then you can have like a, a huge community. You can make a plan, like a 20 years plan. So, okay, guys, look, in five years, I'm going to expel you from the group and you, and you need to graduate yourselves. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> so, I, and co coming back to, to, the, to the projects. Uh, uh, what, what was your, your idea, um, for you to start creating all these projects? Well, uh, I've always thought about having projects more than, than, uh, group politics. Yeah. Uh, it's more about projects than politics. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So I think that one thing that holds back, uh, Capoeira development is that there's a lot of politics. hundred percent. And if we think more about uh, projects, they, they, they have a, a goal, they have a certain goal, and people can join in regardless of their group or their group identity. Uh, it, it's bigger than just the Capoeira politics itself. The yes. Capoeira politi politics work for the inside. 100%. Uh, and, and it's a double-edged sword. As yes. in, in a way, it helps people create a group identity. Uh, on the other hand, it prevents people from seeing the outside world. 
Uh, and I think we, we definitely need more of the outside world to uh, incorporate capoeira too. Otherwise, we, we sort of become a cult. Capoeira has a very uh, cultish, yeah, very cultish uh, environment in itself. Yes. Yeah, uh, and people tend to to be very tribal about about it and and, and just walk around with. Uh, the Papuera friends thinking about their own groups and so on. And that really, really, really prevents us from seeing the potential, the educational potential that Capoeira has to other people to help to spread uh, uh, certain values. If, if you go to uh, a hospital and you start teaching Capoeira there for, for people who are recovering, Capoeira is going to be a kind of a therapy yeah, it's not about building a, a group identity. It's about 100 being being uh, therapeutic for the people who are, who are training there, uh, and that's not gonna be whatever I don't know which group you're part of, but it's not gonna be Kashishi's group 100%. acting there. It's going to be Kapuera 100%. acting there, and, and you just you are just an instrument of of uh, of. Um, a manifestation of something that is bigger. And we, uh, when I started, for example, teaching children uh, and studying about the, the, the roots of pedagogy, of capoeira pedagogics, what, what is very specific to capoeira pedagogics that is different from physical education or from the, the general teaching in schools, from the way people teach in schools, generally speaking. And, and there are some things that are specific to Capoeira. For, for example, the, 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 very, uh, the very setup of the Hoda, of the circle itself, teaching in a circle. Yeah. That's, that's something that is very uh, common to Capoeira and is uncommon. In, in classrooms, uh, and then like there, there are many aspects, pedagogical aspects that belong to the root of teaching capoeira. When I realized that, I started developing a method for teaching children, and that's oh. the method Brincadeira de Angola, yeah. which uh, I, I put up in the, the website, the Capoeira de Sea site. And there's the, the online course, the online free course that has already had 6,000 people enrolled wow, in, in awesome. four years. That's awesome. And that's people from all around the world, really, from all cities, from all states so of Brazil to like different countries all around different continents. And, and people have benefited from that. It's, it's completely free, it's online, it has a good quality of work, and it's about what is common to every Capoeira teacher instead of what is common to my specific group, 100%. to my specific uh, vision of Capoeira. Uh, it, even the, the, the idea that we have something in common uniting all Papura people, it's, it's uh, in a way, a transgression for, for the, the tribal mentality. Yes. Which is like, my Papura is this way and your Papura is another way. Yeah. But not really, not really. Like all people, all people in Papura, all, all uh, groups share many different values 100%. and many different aspects. So if we forget the core aspects of what unites us, and put it together and say, okay, these things can be worked by anybody in any country that, that is cross-cultural. It, 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 you don't need to be a Brazilian. You don't even need to speak Portuguese. Yeah, yeah, 100%. To, to do that. And if, you, if we realize what united, what is common, and what develops people's potentials, so we have something that can be replicated all around the world, regardless of who is doing it. 100%. And that's my idea about the projects. All, all, all different projects, they have a similar mentality. 
It's like as long as you, as we learn the core principles, yeah, anyone can take part, anyone can do it wherever. It doesn't even need to be in Brazil. That's awesome. That's awesome. And and what I really like about this is is like you mentioned, it's it's about capoeira, right? It's not about like I don't care how you look like, I don't care where you come from, uh, I don't care uh, uh, what kind of group you are. I mean, as long as you use capoeira for a benefit of of people around us, and and again, I I, I mention all these on my podcast, every, almost every single episode, and of course different different words, but is is the same meaning of like, and again it comes back to to people, right? Is Capoeira is, is about sharing what what will help us to feel good to to any development that we need, how whatever it means to to people to through Capoeira. And I think that that's a really cool uh project. And if you if anyone is listening to this and you get a chance to to go check those courses, hundred hundred percent uh recommend it, go there. Uh, I will put all the links in the in the descriptions of the of the videos of the podcast. You are going to find these links anywhere, and uh, make sure you enroll to those courses because you, I think you have three courses there, right? Yeah, there is the the Brincadeira de Angola, which okay. is uh, in, despite the name Angola, it's not about Capoeira Angola. All right. Well, Angola refers more to to uh, a remark that all capoeira all around the world comes from the same Angola roots, the same Bantu, the same from the Bantu people of, of uh, the um, central area of Africa. And, but it's not restrained and it's not even about capoeira Angola. It's about uh, pedagogical principles that, that underlie all Capoeira teachers. Nice. Uh, there is the music capoeira, which is about capoeira music, and there is the the base system for adults, like for okay. teaching adults. So these three courses are there. Um, I'm I'm in a process of migrating the the websites and the courses to the org. Uh, we have a, a .org. We have um, uh, an NGO which has been actually it, it's been now uh, acknowledged by the United States. So it's it's uh, just this week by the NGO source. Okay. We have uh, we, we are now equivalent to uh, an American NGO. Wow. So awesome. uh, I'm I'm in the process of migrating the courses to the, the NGO uh, website, but both of them are at capoeiraibc.com or okay. capoeiraibc dot org it's nice and you can nice. put both nice nice yeah i'll put all those websites uh below and any uh either the youtube if you watch the youtube or the podcast the notes or any on instagram i'm going to post this on instagram and it's going to go straight to facebook so make sure you uh go there support the information and go check it out and you're gonna learn so much and you're going to discover stuff that you don't even know that you you can go that way so make sure you you go there check it out and you know support uh, good causes and and those projects so you have a project that helps a hundred thousand kids is 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 that right a hundred thousand no 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 uh -huh. it's uh, uh uh you're probably talking about mare yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's a hundred thousand thousand people living in mare oh, okay 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 I thought for, for a second when I read it, I thought it was uh, like about a uh, hundred thousand kids. I was like, wow, that's a lot of kids. <laughs> no, that's like a world of kids. <laughs> it's actually, it's just a few dozens of kids who do capoeira. Okay, okay. Uh, Mare, it's, it's uh, um, an area in the, in the north zone of Rio. Okay. Uh, it's, um, it's a very densely populated area. It's okay. a lot of people there. Uh, it's a, it's a place very uh, struck by by violence. There are gangs, fights all the time, shootings, wow. rifles, grenades. Yeah. 
and like it's like we're, we're talking about like heavy armor yeah in in yeah. uh in marea but it's a place that that's that it's so rich in, in culture there is so much music there is so many different capoeira groups there are so many dance groups theater schools there is so much going on there that that people don't know yeah and there are, i'm not teaching there myself the person who's teaching there is lucas lucas it's, it's an amazing teacher i'm sure you're going to hear about him in the next few years it's uh he's only 25 years old specialist in in a capoeira for people with disabilities and he's a, a teacher uh, in, in many different social projects in Mare, including the, the two biggest ones that's Luta Pela Paz and Lona de Mare. nice and it's like his work there is amazing so I, I just support him but he's responsible for for all the work I just go there and visit him and and we are together, but he's the guy responsible for it. He's not my student. He's, a, he's an example of what I'm talking about when, when we're uh, speaking about project and not politics. He is a member of, of uh, Senzala, oh, which cool. is a, okay. a big capoeira group. With, uh, yeah. They use, for example, they use cords uh, around the waist, colored, colored cords and, and like saddles and all that and, and I don't I don't uh, do any of that. I don't don't use codes like I'm, I'm identified with the Angola section of uh, of Capoeira. Okay. And still Lucas is part of the institute, he's one of the main teachers. And uh, right now, if, if I were to appoint someone to be in my place on this position, it would be him despite nice. the fact that he's not my student and not part of my group yeah as such yeah so it, 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 you even see like in the videos in like some of the videos like my students who are teachers or um students of different people who are, are students of friends of mine they uh, make the videos the pedagogical videos together and each one is using their their own clothes many times yeah. Their own badges and uniforms and so on. So, uh, Mare, it's it's a, it's a place that I, sh I recommend everyone visiting if you come to Brazil or to Rio de Janeiro. Don't stay just in the touristy area. Yeah, yeah. Go to the favelas and check it out. Check the projects. Uh, and Mare, it's, it's a really really good place. It's like it's not a hundred thousand people, but when you get there and there's like fifty kids training, you, it feels like it's a hundred thousand. <laughs> all the energy on and all the the screaming thank you so much for listening thank you so much for getting this far remember please subscribe give us a thumbs up on facebook or youtube please subscribe to the youtube channel this is going to help us and help me to get bigger numbers and bigger subscribers so we can give more information okay please if you're listening i know you're listening i know you're watching please Give me a subscribe, give him a give, give me a like, okay? I know you're watching right here or listening. Alright. Have an amazing day. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening every single episode. Especially the episode we just did. Alright. Thank you so much. Peace.